All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Running With Wolves. You have joined a very special Running With Wolves episode in that we are doing a late night deep dive on the number one way to generate sales through your social media marketing featuring my glass of rosé that is next to me. Honestly, I feel like this is needed because <laughs> the best is that you guys get caffeinated Savannah constantly but now you're going to get Rosé Savannah. And I feel like caffeinated Savannah talks very quickly. She makes points. Rosé Savannah goes deep. She really gets to the meat of the issue. So I'm excited for us to have this conversation. As you can hear my glass clinking. Let's get into it, shall we? Let's take a sip first. I think that we should take a sip every time I say the word sales. I actually don't think that we should do that, honestly, because it's going to be bad for all of us. <laughs> all right. So let's get into this episode because this is genuinely one of my favorite things to talk about because I do feel that there is so many misconceptions about content in that it is just to, I just got a content on one of, I just got a content. I just got a comment on one of my TikToks this week, last week, it's been, it was very recent. Somebody commented um, because I did a video where I was basically talking about how content is not about creating visibility. It's not about creating engagement. Like, yes, that's important, but if it's not driving sales, you're not doing the right thing with your marketing strategy. And somebody commented and they were like, actually, that's not true. Your marketing is literally just there for visibility. It's all about vanity metrics to, to the T. I'm not joking. I wonder if I could find this comment. Hang on. Pause here because I, I really want to, I want to find this comment because it was so interesting. Here we go. So this is exactly what this comment said. Wouldn't say so. Social media are, and I feel bad because like the grammar with this comment was so bad, but it's a great example of what people really think about content. Social media are pure vanity platforms with clients that have low buying power. Help when some, I'm not joking. I'm, I'm not making this up help when someone is deciding to buy search you other than that useless so essentially what they're saying is that social media is designed to make it so that if somebody searches your brand or your business there is essentially meat to your brand um there's essentially a a brand presence basically that causes them to be you know more of a fan of your brand or your business um, than they already were and what is mind boggling to me about this exact comment or people's perception is that people still in 2024 think that the sole purpose of marketing, of social media, of content is to create fans essentially of your brand. And while that's an important part of your marketing funnel, that is one piece. We have to think about your social media content should be designed to top of funnel, get the most attention possible for your audience, from your audience. It is designed to get in front of as many people as possible, as many of the right eyes. And then from there, once you grab their attention, you turn them into raving fans of your brand or your business. And then from there, the key part is turning those raving fans and that obsession into an actual purchase or investment. And this is where I think people really miss the mark with their content is they literally sit there and they're like, oh yeah, I'm just gonna engage my audience. It's like, no, like people don't grasp the concept that they are missing out on millions of dollars in sales if they did their content right. I am here as living proof, y'all. I literally, for the last three and a half, four years, have built my business on organic content alone. I've been consistent, I've had the right strategy, and I own a multi-million dollar company. Multi-millions, you guys, I am not special. That's the thing that I always tell people. I'm like, I'm not special. I'm not this like insane example of something. I literally just followed the right strategy and I was consistent. And all of my clients are experiencing this as well. We have helped hundreds of women at this point who follow a strategy, regardless of their industry, regardless of their target audience, they all are posting content and all of them are creating sales through their content instead of just getting people to like their brand or instead of 
if somebody is exposed to their brand over here, they're searching their brand on a social media platform, looking at their content and then going somewhere else to purchase from them? Absolutely not. I have clients who literally are finding, like people are finding their brand, they're consuming their content and within 24 hours are investing a high five, six figures into this person's service or are paying hundreds if not thousands of dollars for a product, a high ticket product, a luxury product. These people are creating mass amounts of sales because of their understanding of marketing and of how to leverage their content to create those sales. So um, if this doesn't give you the little ass kicking that you needed to take your content seriously and to know you can create a shit ton of sales from it, I don't know what will, honestly. Like, you're not in the right place because that's all I'm here for, honestly. All right, guys, now that we've established, it is entirely possible for you to create a mass amount of sales from your content. I want to have a conversation about why we are not going to exclusively educate in our content in order to create sales. A huge mistake that I see business owners making is that they are consistently creating educational content, warming content, engaging content, entertaining content to get the attention of their target audience, but then also to engage them and hope that because they become raving fans of their brand or of their business, they end up actually purchasing from them, which is not the case whatsoever. So here's the thing that I have noticed. And you know, here we have literally, you guys, observed so many different brands or businesses marketing strategies. And if you are someone who creates purely educational content, what stems from that is you create an audience of consumers who feel entitled to the information that you're giving away that don't actually end up purchasing from you. Or if they do purchase, it takes them a very long time to consume your content and to convince themselves that they're ready to purchase your product or invest in your service. And what we've noticed with our clients who incorporate solution selling content, which we'll talk about in just a minute, is that the people that end up buying from them or investing in their services, find them, binge their content and purchase very quickly. There aren't a lot of questions. There aren't a lot of objections. They know because of the content that they've consumed that that service or product is the perfect solution for them and they feel excited to purchase or invest. It's not like our other clients who are exclusively educating where it's this audience of people who are like, well, you never give us the answer. Like, give us more answers. Tell us all of this information about your product or your service. They want free information and the more you give them, it's like you give them an inch, they take a mile. The more you give them, the more that they want. Whereas if you were to create converting content, typically what happens is that people consume your content and instead of them over time convincing themselves that you're the right investment or purchase for them to be making, your content answers all of the questions that were already in their head or potential objections. They get all their boxes checked and then all of a sudden, boom, they're ready to make that purchase or that investment. So that is why to me, when I say we are not going to exclusively educate I'm looking out for you guys. I'm not just like talking out of my butt here. When you exclusively educate, unfortunately what happens is you are gonna get stuck in that cycle of an audience of consumers rather than purchasers. And what we want is money in your pocket and actual purchases. And we want those sales to feel easy. And if they're gonna feel easy, it's because you have to give them all the information that they need to make a purchase or an investment decision. So they are equipped with that information and then feel empowered to move forward. Here's the other thing that I will also say is that followers do not necessarily equate to sales. Another thing that we have seen happen is there are many people, you would not believe, honestly, you guys, the amount of people that come to me who every single day have like bigger audiences than I do, honestly. And I'm like, great, what kind of revenue are you guys creating? I am shocked by the amount of revenue that they are creating in a bad way because they have these massive audiences and they're not even creating a small percentage of revenue that reflects the audience that they have. So the reason I bring this up is because I got another comment on one of my TikToks and I'm just using this as an example. The comment said, it was from a, a video that I'd created, which was you need to stop creating educational content. And this person said, then why am I growing 100K a month? Your 
amount of followers that you are growing does not matter if your revenue is not growing. I genuinely don't care how many followers you have, you guys. I really don't. Followers is a vanity metric. Like people like to brag and be like, oh, I have 500,000 followers or I have 2 million followers or I have 100 million followers. Great. How much money are you making from that? I just had a conversation with a potential agency client who has, I don't even want to say how many Instagram followers they have, an insane amount of Instagram followers, and they are only making seven figures a year. For the mass amount of followers that they have on Instagram, in my opinion, they should be making five times that. Not even making anywhere close to that. The number one reason, they are solely educating in their content. The question that I want you to ask yourself is if your audience is growing, but your revenue isn't, how many of those people are buying from you? If you're growing by 100,000 followers per month, are you getting 100,000 new customers? Are you getting 100,000 new clients? A good, like a stellar conversion rate typically for let's say TikTok is gonna look like 50%. So are you getting 50,000 followers or followers? Are you getting 50,000 customers? Are you getting 50,000 clients, new clients per month? If not, you are marketing incorrectly. I want you to think about what your conversion rate is from how many new followers you're getting every single month on different audiences versus how many people are buying your product or investing in your service. And if it's significantly lower than that, we need to have a conversation because odds are, you guys, when you are solely educating, you're not giving people the information that they need to hear to make a purchasing or an investment decision. You're just getting them to be raving fans of your brand, which is one step of the funnel, but it's not what causes people to buy. So instead of educating, we've talked about this before, you need to be solution selling in your content. Now, I'm not saying you need to get rid of your educational content. We talk about our wolf funnel, which is attract, warm, convert. And in that warming phase, we talk about turning your followers into raving fans for your brand or your business. A lot of the ways that you do that is by educating, is by providing value. But unfortunately, that's not enough, like we said, to actually create a sale. So we need to add some solution selling content in there. So what I want you to think about, if you don't know how to solution sell, is I want you to think about your product or your service and think through if your target audience does not have your product or service, what are they experiencing? What problems are they coming up against in their day-to-day -day life? Versus if they did have your product or service, what would they be experiencing? Those are their desires. That's how they want their life to look, right? And then I want you to think about how does your product or service solve those problems or bring those desires to life? And I want you to create content around that over and over and over again. And I also want you to think through how do you do that in a way that is different from your competitors? A lot of times, like for example, if you look at a social media manager or a marketing and sales expert, right? If you line up 10 people that are in your industry, y'all sound the same. Fitness coaches, right? Relationship coaches. If you sell skincare, if you sell, what else? If you sell dog accessories, if you sell florals, if you sell art, everything you guys are saying sounds very eerily similar. And so what you want to do is you want to think about what solution do I offer my clients or my customers and how do I uniquely do that? Typically that's on the product or service side. It's also on the brand side. What are your mission? What are your values? What's your mission as a brand? How are you unique compared to your competitors? And then last but not least is I want you to think about what is the buyer types? What are the buyer types that make up your target audience? Because when you are solution selling, you also need to talk about that solution through the lens of your target audience, through the lens, through the lens of your target audience's buyer types. Because here's the thing, I could tell you until the cows come home that I'm going to help you create content or I'm going to help you create sales through your content. But our buyer types are analytical and assertive, which means they need to see ROI, data, statistics, analytics, all of that good stuff to make a purchasing decision. They also need to see all the deliverables of what we're going to give people when it comes to our services. So I'm going to say, instead of just saying, I'm going to help you create sales through your content, I'm going to say, I'm going to help you turn the hour that you're taking to create content every single day and creating this amount of sales. I'm going to help you two or three exit without two or three Xing your effort. So you're making way more money off of the content because it's strategic and intentional. And then on top of that, I'm going to showcase social proof. 
I'm going to talk about all of the deliverables of our programs that help them do that. So they have everything that they need to make an investment decision. Same goes for products, same goes for services. There are four different buyer types and they all take different things into consideration when they are making a purchase or an investment. So it's really important. It's almost like having a cheat sheet for sales, you guys. I talk about this all the time. If you know the four different buyer types and you know what they take into consideration when they're making when they're making a purchase or an investment decision, you know what buttons to push, what to tell them to get them to buy. And all that's doing is you literally just putting information in front of them that they need to hear to be like, oh yeah, I do do that, or I do struggle with that, or I do want that. I don't know how to solve that problem. I don't know how to fix that desire or meet that desire. Therefore, here's the solution that you are presenting me. This sounds about what I need. All my boxes are checked. Here we go, let's purchase or invest. So hopefully that is helpful to you guys because I need you to understand that you educating your audience, while yes, it's helping you to create a audience of raving fans is doing nothing to increase the sales of your business. And ultimately, that's why we create content to drive sales. And so if your sales aren't increasing, but you're putting in all of this effort and energy over here, you're wasting your effort and energy because it's not creating the results that you're looking for. And ultimately you need to shift the effort, shift the strategy so that you can see way more sales through that same amount of effort. And if you don't know how to do that, send us your questions in our DMs because we want to help you guys. There's so many small shifts and changes that you could be making. And I want to make sure that marketing and sales feels like the easiest part of your business. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next episode. Bye, guys.